Okay, then I'm just doing a quick introduction to my new project um, uh, on my steam locomotive. If you've watched my past videos, uh, in front of you, you'll just see that battery locomotive I've made, and that it's all finished now. So I'm just about to embark and make a start on my next project. Um, just a quick background information, if you've not seen my previous video, I'm recently new to locomotive engineering. Um, not long back I joined my model engineering club, my local one. And as my first project I started this, I did this battery loco just to get me up and running to, to run right track with my granddaughters. Well now that's done, uh, I've decided to do a, a live steam locomotive. Going back to my, my new project, uh, I've decided on doing a, me a meter made, it's called. I've shown you photographs at the beginning of this clip. It's a five inch um, loco and it's a six wheel version of a sweet pea. And I've decided to do that on, on taking advice from uh, well established members. I've decided to do that one uh, purely and simply because although there's nothing simple in in <laughs> locomotive engineering it's a sim it's this a simple design and it and it utilizes a marine type boiler I'm told which is um, a lot more easier to make than a, a standard loco boiler this this loco if, if anybody's new to the game or or if you're a well established builder you'll you'll appreciate the well established people that uh, castings and parts for, for, for making locos is quite expensive and if I bought everything from a, a well known supplier uh, I did a quick calculation on uh, on how much I'm, it's going to cost me for, for all the materials and the castings and the boiler kit and everything and I had a bit of a shock when, when I'd done that calculation and this is only on 2017 prices it's come it coming in at uh, between two thousand six hundred and three thousand pounds. That's that's just for all the materials. That's it, not including your silver your, your silver solder and, and things like that, your consumables. So as a as a ballpark figure it's it's probably gonna cost three thousand pounds if I take that route. Now I like to get value for money and uh, I've decided I'm gonna I'm like like on the other loco I made, it, that didn't cost me much money at all really. Um, I've decided to do it on a budget and uh, avoid wherever possible uh, using castings. I'm going to buy me my own boiler, my copper for my boiler individually to, to get that price down. Uh, and obviously I'm gonna I'm gonna do it in a proper a proper way and everything. I'm not gonna skimp on anything. I'm just gonna shop around for my materials. And just an example of my materials, I've now got the the frame material. And there's a picture of my frames, a drawing of my frames rather, not a picture. Now. To buy all the laser cut frames and all the uh, the metal to do the stretches and the buffer beams and the the side frames, you, I'm talking of paying well, probably more than two hundred pound. So I had a look around my local suppliers, and I've got a local engineering firm not far away, and. Although it's going to involve more work for me, that I'm not bothered about that because time don't matter to me. I can just ferret away in my workshop and uh, and, and just progress as, as as and when. Anyway, I'm digressing. All this material you see in front on you, that's going to complete all my buffer beams, my frame, my stretchers, my angle to join me my frame. Uh, and I got that for thirty pound. That would be over two hundred pounds. But what I'm having to do, the the mate this material is is um, is not bright mild steel. So I'm going to have to 
and we'll have to skim all edges up to, to square them up and just sand them down with a sander. Uh, but the bugbear was this material, it only had six inch wide material and my frames are four inch. So I'm setting two. I've already sawn one and I'm sawing the full length of that 30 inch mainframe if you can see that now you might think I'm a bit of a masochist here but I'm going to be honest it's, it's not a difficult job to do if you, if you set your stall out uh, I've just cut halfway down that second frame it's only took me 10 to 15 minutes at most and I'm cutting them at four and between four and a sixteenth and four and an eighth to allow me some uh, material to, to skim them up. Now, depending on how good your axe sawing is, you'll have to you'll have to leave what material you think best for you. But I'm sawing here. I don't know if you can see that uh, in, in this light, but I'm just following that line within within a few thou. I measured me all the one with vernier and I think I was three thou out from one end to other, three or four thou. So if you just take your time, uh, and, and time don't matter to you, you can save a lot of money that way. And just to prove to you that I'm not cheating and I'm saying I'm sorry, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do a little bit on camera. Right, now for anybody that's a, a beginner, you, uh, you uh, professionals out there will know exactly what I'm doing. I've got my blade set at, at an angle to miss, to miss this side. Now that makes it a bit more difficult to saw because you've got, you've got to put different forces on to keep yourself straight. But if you just take your time and if you start to go one way or other, you just apply a little bit of pressure either way to bring it back. And just a bit of experience in doing that, and you'll you'll progress, and you, you'll do a nice, neat job. And just keep checking to see if you're still on line. And then just occasionally, every so often, I'll just put my ruler on to check that I'm not following a different line that may have scratched on it. And just keep checking it like that, and uh, you'll soon get through it. So basically, just to recap, I've got my, my angle to join my frames together. I've got my main frame sides, as you've seen, uh, one's in, being sawn, one's here at the back. I've got my stretching material. I've got my front buffer beam, my rear buffer beam, a bit of spare material there where I've sawn off for, for other uses, and I've got my, my, my foot plate for front. That's a bit of steel I already had in stock, and it, I know it looks a bit rusty, but it's it, it's it's only surface rust, and it, it'll sand off lovely that. So that's all my materials for me uh, for me my frame. So I've just quickly worked out what I've saved there, and uh, my material cost me thirty pound. To buy a laser cut frames is two hundred odd. Um, I've only spent fourteen percent of that amount of money on my frames when, I, when I've got it all sewn up and what my next job will be I'm going to put this in my milling, on my milling table now my milling table has only got an 11 inch um, travers so I'm going to have to do it in a couple of you know two or three uh, goals each one and I'm going to mill, mill the sides square and to size and then I'll mark it all out and put me me, me uh, openings in for me uh, own guides, and uh, and then we'll take it from there. So I don't know how long this project's going to take me, but uh, watch this space. And and this is first time I've made a steam locomotive. So if anybody is is thinking of doing it and a, and a on a beginner's curve, if you like, then uh, that's where I am at this moment in time. Um, so if you're interested follow me parts and I'll, I'll try and document each stage that I do anyway thanks for watching and uh, if you've not seen my me, me battery loco video which I built from all scrap items in my garage and workshop 
take a look at that. Thanks for watching then. Bye.